to date. We are live. What does that mean? That means we're live. We're coming to you. We dig deeper today. Where you going, Jill? I got people leaving the studio. Where are they going? Can't leave me in here by myself. <laughs> Can't leave me in here by myself. That's what I always tell everybody. Don't leave me by myself. There ain't no telling what I'll do. So, hey, listen, you know how I like to do things. Tell me if you're coming on board. Tell me who's here. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what's on your mind. We have a very, very dig deeper call today. We're going to dig deeper into a few things about your business, about your life, about who you're listening to. That's what we're going to do. We're going to dig. So if you guys are just joining me, let me tell you how it goes. Every Tuesday, we do a live real estate investing talk show on my Facebook feed. Also, we go to YouTube and podcast and blog talk and all that other cool stuff. But you guys get the inside look because... Um, while I'm taking breaks over there, I'm still talking to you guys. We also go Wednesday live, which is today is you're here and we do our dig deeper series on Wednesday. And man, this dig deeper show can be anything from us digging deeper into an expert, us digging deeper into a deal, us digging deeper into books. Um, us digging deeper into our own personal life and our, our situations. It's just our dig deeper Wednesday. And so that's what it's all about. I'm happy you're here. I'm happy you're on board with us today. Um, uh, so like I said, come on board with me. Tell me who you are. Tell me where you're from. Let's get some shout out started today. Let's get some let's get some content going today. Let's get some people working with me today. Let's get your questions coming in. That's what we need. Hey, you know what? In the new studio, we need to get a phone. Like a red phone, like from Chaos Show? Well, we just need a phone. I want to be able to start taking live calls. Okay. I want to get to where people can just call in and I can talk to them. Okay. Hey, let me ask you this, Facebook family. If you would like me to start taking live calls from you guys on our real estate show or on our Dig Deeper, just helping you overcome things, just type in, take my call. <laughs> type in, take my call. Take my call, Zach. We got Jonathan from the Rhea. Jonathan, oh my word. What you doing on here, man? Robert says hi, Zach and Jill, and Don says hey, Zach. What's up, guys? Hey, listen, yesterday was a phenomenal show. We had uh, like over 200 comments. We were pushing massive shares yesterday. We're already into the thousands of views from uh, yesterday's show, and that's all because of you guys. That's because of you guys. I'm going to put my radio voice on today. I'm going to talk to you like this right here. I could read. I could start to read a novel to you like this, couldn't I? I'd probably put you to sleep. Um, anyways, we got lots to do today. We got lots to do. So today is our Dig Deeper. If you're just joining me for the first time, who is this crazy guy? Well, I am your real real estate coach. My name is Zach. Childress and welcome to the show. So I welcome all new people. Why? Because I love that you're here. You stopped by to see what we're doing. We do these shows every Wednesday. They're our Dig Deeper show. We do every Tuesday at 1.30 Eastern Time Zone also, and that's our real estate investing talk show. That's to help you with real estate. We have topics. We just talked about the straight option. The other day we talked about talking to banks and driving for dollars and Next week, we're going to be talking about rental houses versus apartments. And what is that all about? So um, so anyways, that's what it's about. So welcome, welcome. So if you're new, come on here and tell me you're new. Say, hey, this is Mike and I'm new from Baltimore. Let me know. I want to give you a shout out because we're going to get this party started here in just a minute. We're in the party and mood around here in the office. We got Paris's birthday. So give a big shout out to Paris, a rock star support person. Happy birthday, Paris. So my question for you guys was this. I asked everybody on here, if you're just joining me, I want to tie in a, a, a phone line into our studio because I want to be able to start taking live calls. I want to be able to get you guys on the phone, talk to you, answer your questions, and let other people hear you as well. Um, if you would like me to start taking live calls, 
I want to see you type that in. Take my call. Um, and if enough people do that, then I think I might start doing that. We got three. We got three. Only three people want me to take your call? Paris says thank you. Oh, Paris. I've always wanted to go to Paris. And I can just go next door if I want to because she's next door. Was that not funny? It was if your mind was dirty. I wasn't being dirty. No, but I apparently was. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not see me go? I, I mean, I, that was that was not trying to be dirty at all. <laughs> we'll leave my mind out of this. Yes, it's that's a, a good it's thing. It's a sick, sick place, apparently. That's a good thing. So listen, how many new people do we got on here today, or is this just our, our, our normal following on here today? We have Steve and Talon. Steve, welcome back. Man, I need, you know what, guys? You guys got something special coming down the pipeline. I'm always thinking about you guys. And so I'm creating all kinds of free stuff I'm going to be giving away. I'm, going to be, I'm creating this one book that's going to be a six-month, week-by-week plan for you to get your business off started. And I'm going to start giving these things away on this call. I'm creating a, a 52 week quote book in goal setting. I'm going to be giving that away on these live streams. I'm creating building. I, I, man, I'm creating so many things that I'm just going to use as giveaways to the people that just keep coming back and showing love and sharing my stream. I'm been doing all that for you guys. We have Diane Miller from Baltimore. Diane from Baltimore. Ariana and Robert are here today. So Diana is new on our Dig Deeper show. Yes. Well, Diana, have you been to our real estate investing talk show? And so maybe you're just new here. Well, this show, look, I'll answer your real estate questions too. I mean, I'm all about real estate, but this show really is just about us becoming better at who we are. This show is about us understanding what's our roadblocks, what's holding us back. You know, we do interviews with experts to kind of see how they overcame their journeys in life. We do deal reviews because sometimes we want to dig deep, deeper into a deal and, you know, and that way you guys can get out of your own way of running the numbers. Um, we do dig deep deeper into our some book series and there's lots of these on this page as well and then we just do dig deeper into topics and like today's topic is you know who are you listening to right like who are you getting your information from talon says you might have to do a separate show for taking calls why do you think that talon you think i just maybe i do a thursday show where it's take phone uh, dig deep, or what would our thursday what would you call it Talk to your coach day. Light it up with Zach. Light it up with Zach. Look at Jill coming in. Hey, everybody, give me a name. Um, going off of what Talon said there, give me a name what you would call the show if all I did was come in for an hour and take phone calls from you guys. What would you name that? Jill's got light it up with Zach. Yep. All right, type that in, Jill. I'm going to everybody to type in the name they'd call the show. Don says, always appreciate how you create and try to give us the scoop, passion, and helping us push past ourselves. Thanks. Oh, Don, man. That's pretty cool, bud. I appreciate that. I'm glad you recognize that. That makes me happy. So light it up with Zach from Jill. That's what she would name the show. Um, you can find a phone that lights up. Well, I mean, we ain't got to do all that. <laughs> Justin could rig it up. I'm sure, I'm sure Justin <laughs> could absolutely rig it up. So, um, hey, anyways, if you guys are just joining me for the show, you're just coming on. This is Zach Childress. I am your real real estate coach, and I'm also your motivator. I'm also your, your driver. I'm also your business consultant. I'm also your friend. I'm also your leader. I'm also your companion. I'm also your sidekick. I'm everything, man. I'm all about helping you help others help others, right? Why do I do this? I do this to help you guys. That's why I do it. All right. Um, it's all about putting it out there. And how do I get you to help me help you help others? By sharing the message. That's how it happens. Yeah. You, when you share the message, then you are doing what I'm asking, which is getting the message out there. So Talon says Thursdays with Zach 
Kiz. Kiz. <laughs> Steve says Zach Express Line. Zach Express Line. I like this too. Um, Robert says Off the Hook with Zach. Oh, I actually do like that because you are off the hook. You're off the phone. You're on with me. I actually like, write that down. I like that and yours. I like Light It Up with Zach and I like Robert's Off the Hook with Zach. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. So. All right, what else you guys got for me today? What else you got for me today? You guys know I read these things. We had a couple of people yesterday that thought I was um, fake. Is that yeah. what it was? I, or not fake, but they thought it was a record, and they were like, well, if you're real, you shout my name out. <laughs> So some of you witnessed that. All I wanted to do to that guy was this. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I got more of these coming. You guys have no clue. Uh, if any of you ever watched the guy on uh, the financial network, uh, Kramer, mad, I think it's mad money with Kramer. Um, he's got a ton of these little things and um, I just love it, man. So when someone says something, I can be like, stop it. <laughs> so, all right, well, come on with me, guys. Um, the show today is all about digging deeper into who are you listening to. It's very important that you pay attention to that. My question for today, for everybody that's coming on board, is if I did another show, and that show, excuse me, <coughs> If that show was geared around me taking your phone calls to help you, guide you, answer your questions um, on an hour show, what would you name that show? What would you name that show? So that's the big question today. So here's what we're going to be going into. So I want to talk to you guys about not what you want out of life but how you allow life to affect you how life affects you by the people you listen to the surroundings the the education that you're getting and who's giving it to you and you know who's influencing you and and all that stuff i want to talk about that today this is going to be one of those talks where you know, you're going to have to take a long, hard look at your life. You really are today. And and sometimes it's easier for me to say it and you to be like, oh, well, it's easy for Zach to say it. But guys, it's not easy for me to say it. And here's why, because I've, I've been where you are. You guys may, you may not understand, but have you ever seen an iceberg? Let me show you what an iceberg looks like. So this is the water, right? Whee! And then an iceberg, you know, it, it sticks out of the water like that. And typically that's what all the people see is just the top of the iceberg, right? That's all they see. They're like, oh, look at that beautiful iceberg. But that's like a lot of times in life when you look at people that are successful. You're like, oh, well, look at them. It's easy for them. It's easy for them. Yeah, because it gets easier. But what you don't look at is what's under the water. You don't look at this iceberg that had to had to go and had all this to had to go through to just get this top to stick out right that's what most people don't look at they don't see that they don't pay attention to that let me put that down there <laughs> They don't see that side of it. They don't see that side of the journey. They don't see that side of the life. And, and my point to you is, is this is where most people are at right now. And this has everything to do with the influence that you're telling yourself or that others are telling you. And so I want to share with you that I've been through it myself. Man, I can't tell you how many times in my journey someone has said no to me. Someone has said you can't do it. I even had my own family tell me I shouldn't be where I'm at in life. Which, I mean, you could take that as a compliment or you could take that any way you want. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I've had my own family look me dead in the eyes and say to me, Zach, you're not supposed to be where you are right now. That, I mean, think about that. Once you've gotten here, you, you know, and here's the other side. It, it's, it's a lot of haters, even though, you know, they're the people you love the most sometimes are your haters. At the end of the day, let me take some clothes off. I'm getting hot in here. <laughs> I'm getting deep over here, okay? I'm getting deep as Jill stares at me. <laughs> hey, my point is, is this, is that when you're going through here, you're in your most vulnerable state. 
And even when you get up here, do you understand you're still going to have haters? You're still going to have naysayers. You're still going to have people in your life that are going to be telling you you can't do what you're trying to do. It's just that's that's just how it works. And so I'm sharing this with you because I want today to be an impactful day for you. I want you to really take a step back and say, who am I listening to? Because sometimes we have to actually stop listening to ourselves because we're the ones that give us the most negative answers there are. We're the ones that doubt ourselves. We're the ones that say, well, I don't think it can be possible. Hey, listen, if this is a message that's resonating with you already, let me know I'm going down the right path with you, okay? So just type in, you know, something that says, you know, I'm listening or, you know, or, or yeah, just type in I'm listening. Let me just you know, let me hear from you. Okay. I want to know that this is a message that you understand one and that this is a message that is very powerful for you because, you know, look, we can all get excited about real estate and move and move forward and move forward and move forward. Um, but what we also have to be prepared, prepared for is all of the other stuff that affects our thinking processes that affects our mind. You know, it, it affects our growth. It affects our ability to grow because we're in a, we're in a state of confusion. Confusement. And what, what does that really mean, a state of confusement? Well, it means that when we're unsure of our journey, when we're unsure of where we're going, we have a tendency in life to question everything or doubt ourselves or be fearful of where we're going. And that's why it's so crucial that we understand where we're getting information from and where and whom we're listening to. And you've heard me say it over and over again, guys. You will lie to yourself. You will absolutely lie to yourself, okay? What do I mean by that? You will tell yourself it can't be done. You will tell yourself it's not possible. You will tell yourself that you're going to lose. You will tell yourself that it's too risky. You will tell yourself that it's it's a journey you can't win. You will tell yourself you don't have time. You will tell yourself you don't have money. You will tell yourself all the things that your subconscious want you to repeat to yourself. Because here's why. The subconscious state loves complacency, loves it. Why? Because it's predictable. The subconscious state loves predictability. It loves when you are in a process in your life where you're completely predictable. So therefore, it doesn't have to freak out because it's doing something different or new. So as soon as you move out of complacency and you move into a world of new adventures, new learning, pushing your boundaries. That subconscious state is now not very predictable. It has no clue what you're doing. It's saying, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not, this is not where I want to be. So it starts putting doubt and fear and confusion and questioning and, and all the lies it tells you so that you don't go forward. That's what it does to you. And that's the subconscious trying to keep you in a, in a complacency state. And it, and it may not be who you are at the core because you might have drive and passion to go out and build the biggest company you've ever wanted, to replace your income, to become a multimillionaire. But your subconscious doesn't want that. And let me tell you why. Because you haven't learned to program your subconscious. See, the subconscious is something that lays back dormant in complacency. And as soon as you try to be different or try to grow or try to move out of the world you're in, whoo, you wake it up. It's up. It's alive right now. It's saying, whoa, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. And you're trying to say, no, I want to go forward. I want to go forward. I want to go forward. So as a young entrepreneur, one of the things you might be able to identify this to is have you ever had the moments where like you're building your business? And now this is a question. I want your feedback answer. Have you, as my viewers right now, as a young entrepreneur trying to get started, have you ever like had those weeks where you're just like pushing and driving and you're on fire and you're moving and then you have those weeks where you're like, well, I don't know if this is going to work. Like, you know, what if that makes a mistake? Let me, let me pull back a little bit. Let me, let me reanalyze. And then, and then you go into that state where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. That's the tug of war between your drive and your subconscious state. So if you face that, I want to know, talk to me, talk to me, Facebook, talk to me, Fans, talk to me. 
Yes, definitely. That's called second guessing. That's right. Jill, you don't have to type it. You can just talk. You have a mic. <laughs> I encourage everybody to start typing and, and tell. So, um, plus I like to hear you read the comments instead of me. Oh, oh, got you. Um, Whoa, what was that? Oh. That was your subconscious. That was my subconscious <laughs> kicking in. <laughs> So, um, Solid L, she says, our subconscious complacency. Yes, it is true. Uh, Jonathan says, definitely. I said, yes, I always second guess myself. Um, Steve said, it's amazing what the con subconscious will do, good or bad. Diane said, yes. That's true, guys. That subconscious is, man, it's one of those things you got to be careful about. It will absolutely destroy you because what happens is, is you end up starting to listen to it, right? You start listening to it. You, you, you fall into the trap. You know, that's like somebody trying to, you know, go out and make, you know, a living and, and, and they try a new adventure. They try their own little business or, or they, they go into commission sales, right? you know, which basically are businesses themselves, a commission sell. But there's a lot of complacency that gets created. And then the unsurety sets in because the subconscious says, oh, well, I like this. Oh, but I need to work harder to make more money. I need to learn more to make more money. I need to grow to make more money. Well, that's putting yourself in an uncomfortable state. So you start doubting and questioning and, and you have concerns, whether it's business or any type of commission-based sales. And you have to learn to control that. And how do you control that? You start to understand how to control your subconscious. And the only way to do that is to by empowering yourself and empowering your subconscious by constantly be embedding, you know, motivational stuff, motivational movies, motivational, you know, songs, motivational clips, always be listening to the power of growth. That is how you're able to start to trigger the new thinking processes in your mind. So every day, Angel always watching. Love it, Angel. Stay with me, my friend. Miss Verda is here. She says so true. Miss Verda. All right, well, listen up, everybody. If you're just joining me, yes, this is Zach Childers. I am your real real estate coach, and I'm here to help you guys. And we've got Miss Jill in the back helping also. And we've got some stuff we're talking about today. And this is our Dig Deeper Wednesday series where we talk about Anything with digging deeper into yourself, your personal growth, um, a book, an expert, it's all about Dig Deeper Wednesday. If you missed yesterday, Tuesdays we go live as well. That's our real estate investing talk show. So I'm happy to have you guys here. You know my message. If you don't know my message, my message is, is to help as many people this year um, or to help more people this year than I did last year and to help more people next year than I did this year. And the only way I can do that is through your help. That's it. Listen, I can touch a lot of people on my own, but I can affect a lot more with you guys helping me by sharing our message. That's the biggest thing that I always ask. So, hey, so here's what we're going to do. Sit back, grab yourself a soda pop. I'm going to play a quick video for you. Um, and this video is all about who are you listening to? And it's really a video of me talking to someone else about something that they had brought up to me about, you know, they had they loved what they did and some people were being negative about it. And um, this was really my answer when it came to that question. Who are you listening to? So let's watch that video real quick. Other people's opinion, like what does that really matter at the end of the day? You know, what I have found is, is everybody has an opinion on something, but most of the time, those people are the ones not doing anything. Most of the time, those are the people sitting around complaining about their life because nothing's ever gonna come from it, so therefore they wanna hold you back. They wanna make it more difficult for you. They wanna put the seeds in your mind that it's not possible because in their mind, they don't believe it's possible because they've given themselves excuses on why their life is stuck where it is. And so the problem with that is, is we allow other people's influential states to start putting their negativity on us and giving us their opinions, even when we know it works, even when we've seen it firsthand, when we went out into business and we've made it happen and we've built businesses, they still come and, and, and give you those, that nonsense of their opinion and why it shouldn't work or why it won't work or why you're gonna fail. The other side of it is, is when you're just starting, you're just starting your business. 
and they're, you're in the most vulnerable state. And so you're excited. You're, you're thrilled to be going after something that's gonna change your life, right? It's gonna change your life. And at the same time, you wanna share that with the people around you. You wanna tell them about your excitement. And there's always that one person or two or three. And a lot of times they're the ones that are the closest to you that wanna shoot it down. They wanna tell you it won't work. They wanna tell you it's not gonna happen. They wanna tell you every reason that it, you will not succeed at it. And the reality is, is because they don't want you to succeed. They wanna hold you back because they've got a fear of loss. They feel that if you're doing what you love and you're doing the things that are gonna change your financial situation, that you're no longer gonna be at the same level as them. And let me tell you something, that is the truth and you need to own that. Because as you start to build new thinking processes and you start to go after your dreams and your business and do what you love, your passion, you become a new person. You become somebody that's not like everyone else. And therefore you set your standards higher and your standards will become higher and maybe they're not gonna fit your standards. And let me tell you something, that is what you want. You want higher standards. You don't want other people's opinions to dictate where you're gonna go. So at the end of the day, are you gonna let other people's opinions stop you from reaching your success? So, think about that one. Who are you listening to, right? Man, it drives me crazy with some of the people and what they'll say to you and why they wanna put that on you in your life. Right. Like, you know, just because they gave up on their dreams doesn't mean you need to let them influence you on your dreams. And, and that's ultimately when we say, who are we listening to? You know, because you are on a journey right now and you are in a vulnerable state. Let's just call it what it is. Why are you in a vulnerable state? And it's because you're doing something new. You're doing something you've never done before. You're, you're, you're growing, you're learning, you're becoming a better person. You're understanding financial literacy. You're understanding investing. You're understanding how to grow. All of that puts you in a state of vulnerability, which means you're acceptable to emotional responses. And, and let me help you identify that because when you're acceptable to emotional response, then you tend to take in data and put out data emotionally instead of logically. And so it, it's, it's part of it. I mean, when I first started my first business, I was in an emotional state as in not uh, crying all the time, but I was reacting in an emotional state because you have this desire and you have this drive to that you have this vision and you want it. And as soon as somebody comes in and says, nope, that won't happen, you either get defensive or you start to go, well, well, I wonder if they're right. Well, why would they say that? What do they know? And you start questioning yourself. You start questioning your own drive. You start questioning your own purpose. You start questioning the thing that you're doing that is making you happy. You start questioning all that. And, and at the end of the day, you got to be careful who you listen to. You're like, why are you listening to that person? What did that person do in their life that you would look up to or see as a role model? And are they sharing information with you that's specific to that part of their life, right? If you're listening to your friend who's never done anything with his or her life, and you know they're sitting around doing nothing and they're hanging out on your couch watching you know Netflix and drinking three day old beer and eating two day old pizza, and they're telling you it ain't going to work, you're going to listen to them? Are they in a financial state that would make you say, well, man, maybe they have some understanding of what I want to do? No, but we have a tendency to listen. And that's because it's what? It's our subconscious playing tricks on us, trying to gather data that would debate you from going in the direction you want to go. So you have to be very careful with that. Um, and so when you start to look deep inside and start to think about the decisions that you're making in your life, you got to start to stand strong and stand proud and be more of like, this is what I'm going to do. This is the path I'm taking. And it doesn't matter who gets in my way. I'm going down this path as long as I am listening to others that have done what I want to do.
If you have not done what I want to do, I'm not listening to you. And, and listen, and in my life, that's how I live. I absolutely live that way. And a lot of my family didn't like it. And a lot of my family got mad at me and said I was rude and said that I was disrespectful. And, you know, and, 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 and that's because I challenged them. I challenged the order of which life was supposed to be. I challenged my elders by saying, well, I don't think you're right and I'm not going to listen to you because you know, you've done good for yourself, but you have lots of debt. You still have a mortgage payment. You barely, you know, can go on a vacation every year. Why would I listen to you when it comes to where I need to be financially in my life? I love you. If you want to teach me how to make a bonfire, then let's go. Cause you make one every weekend and drink beer all weekend. That's just not me. It's not who I am. It's not what I want to do. It's not where I want to go. I want to build a legacy for my kids, kids, kids. I'm thinking so far into the future where most people are just thinking for the weekend. It's the difference. It's who I am. It's what I want to be. It's where I want to be at. It's where I want to put my state of thinking. It's who I want to listen to. I want to listen to people that have built legacies. I want to listen to people that are living that life. I want to listen to people that travel the world and their kids are taken care of. I want to listen to those people in my life. I, that's who I want to listen to. Those are the people I want to network with. Those are the people I want to mastermind with. Those are the people I want on my team as my mentors and my consultants. Those are the people I want to put myself around. So when I say to you, who are you listening to? You need to think about that question. You need to think about like, who am I engaging with on a, on a weekly basis? And where am I gathering my information? You know, one of the worst things that you can do is listen to too many people. Do you understand that? Like, uh, how many of you really understand what I just said there? Jill, you got that? I did. <laughs> Jill's the only one that got that. I smacked her upside the head with it. My, my statement was, how many of you understand that when you listen to too many people, it's a hindrance to your growth? That's why I always say I'm so thankful that the only one that I've ever met in this industry is you, and the only one that I've ever followed in this industry is you. So I get it right the first time. I, t I take that as a compliment. <laughs> yes, creates confusion. That's right. Because here's why it creates confusion. I'm going to play off of what Steve just said there. It creates confusion because you're listening to too many people. And, and, and here's what I'm trying to say. There's a million and one ways to make a million dollars in real estate, okay? Like there really is. You don't need them all. You don't need them all. You just need to get on a plan of execution that's going to work, and you need to find somebody that has lived it, breathed it, done it, and helped others do it, and just stay on that path. What happens is, is you start down this path of this one way to become a millionaire as a real estate investor, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, well, look, this guy's doing it too. Let me follow him. Well, along that path, those two people do two different things in some ways and in some cases. Well, now you're trying to flip back and forth and figure out which one's going to work the best. Well, then you go over here, oh, well, let me start listening to this guy too. Well, now you're bouncing between two, three, four, five, six, eight different people, and you're not going to get anywhere. It's called paralysis of analysis. I got people in my office like that. You know, I'm all about educating yourself and getting training, and, and we absolutely drive our student advisors to get constant training on a regular basis. And we train them twice a week, and they empower themselves outside of the office to do that. But we have some that want to get trained from everybody in the world, and the problem is, is they get stagnant. And I've said it to them, and other people have said it to them. I'll say it to you as my students, and I'll say it to anybody that comes across me in life. You don't need to study from everyone and everything. You need to get congruent in your process with one process until you get it dialed in and it works. It's just the way it works, guys. It's the way it is. You start trying to do 102 things in multiple different directions, you're not going to go anywhere. And then you're going to sit around and complain why you're not growing or why you're not building or why you're not making money because it's a you. It's all, it's because you think that this idea before you've even stabilized your life, you got this mindset, oh, multiple streams of income, which is right, but you got to stabilize. You got to get one working before you can start two and three and four, but you'll go out and start trying to do 101 different things at one time. And in two years from now, you'll wonder why you're in the same financial state. Same financial state. It has everything to do with why you're doing what you're doing, okay? You got to get one. Got to get one dialed in before you move on. So who are you listening to? That's the question of the day. As Steve says, uh, we need cheerleaders around us that support us. Uh, man, I got some cheerleaders. 
I sure do. I'm telling you. I understand, Steve. <laughs> I got to have my cheerleaders, man. Listen, I'm a pretty confident guy, right? But um, having cheerleaders makes it even that much better. I promise you. I just thought that was funny because we've talked about that before. Yeah, it is. It is uh, Diane, she says, you're right, Zach, but it's really hard, especially when it's your spouse. Oh, Diane, you're so true. Um, I get it totally. I had to let go of one because of it. You're not recommending divorce, though. No, I'm not recommending it. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. <laughs> I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying, like, I get it. I, I totally get it. And here's <laughs> the problem with that is, is that, you know, a lot of times they want to be seen or they want to be shown that it will work before they engage. But on the other side, they just may not have any interest at all. And, and, and that's kind of what happened with me. Um, you know, I, I had a, a spouse that was very engaged in the beginning and wanted to build. Well, then I didn't want to stop building. I wanted to keep building. I wanted multiple companies and I wanted to go global, which I'm proud to say we are global now. I've, I've managed to pull that off. You know, I wanted to go big, not big as in, <coughs> 300 employees and seminars every weekend. I didn't want to do that. I meant big with my touch. I wanted to go across the water and touch everybody. I wanted multiple companies that other people were running that, you know, I could just sit back and enjoy. Um, mine didn't. And it restricted my growth. It restricted my drive. It restricted my purpose. It restricted me as a person. And I could never understand why I couldn't get in the right mindset or why I was struggling to find love in what I did. Because when I would go home, I could feel the resentment and the pullback from what I was trying to do that I loved and they weren't involved in it. You know, so that's a little bit more about my backstory, right? And so I say to you, if you have a spouse that is not involved in your growth, both, you know, you, you need to you, you need to have that talk with them because here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some let me give you, let me give you some relationship <laughs> advice. <laughs> My and I'm probably not the one to give relationship advice, but um, disclosure right there. <laughs> yeah, disclosure right there. I mean, um, I, you know, relationship advice is this. What I have learned over. You guys got to understand, first off, I married my high school sweetheart and was with her for 20 years, and then then we divorced, right? Uh, I'm, I'm going deep with you right now. This Dig Deeper Wednesday, right? Um, but, you know, what I found in that journey for 20 years was this, that as much as I cared for her and I loved her, we, were, we had grown up into two completely different people, completely different people. Okay. And, and, and I learned that and, and, and that's important to acknowledge, right? Is like, you know, it was a tough, it was a tough decision to choose what we did, but I had said, look, I believe I'm bringing you down and I believe you're bringing me down. I think if we separated, we would both grow into better people. Five years later, she's doing amazing. I'm doing amazing. Yes. I'd like to say I was right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just knew like we we're not we're at a point where we're not meant to be together anymore. But I'm not saying that everybody should go down that route. I'm saying that you need to have a long, hard discussion with your spouse and say, look, if you don't support this, that's fine. But support me if you love me. And I think that was something that wasn't there. You know, I, I was fine if she didn't want to be in the growth of my companies. I was fine if she didn't want to participate. But I still wanted her to be okay with me chasing my dreams, right? You have to support the other person no matter what. And the sad part about that is, is a lot of spouses, when their their wives especially, this is a big one, so I'm going to speak to all the women on the, on the call today. The wives especially, when they start to step out into the world and say, I want to do my thing. I want to build my company. I want to bring revenue into this partnership just like you have. Well, a lot of men that are not very confident, they don't like that. They, they look at it as, oh, well, what am I going to do now? Well, you're doing this. They're just not confident with the, both parties doing what they love because they come from an old school mentality. And, and a lot of times that is part of the issue. And that's why they, they, they don't support you. They feel like if, if their not negative mindset can look down on your decision or, or try to scare you, that you won't do it. And then they gain control. And that's called passive manipulation. 
I'm so glad to be out of that situation. I mean, this might be hitting some people pretty deep right now. <laughs> So um, I'm going deep with you right now. <laughs> so, um, but that's why it goes back to who are you listening to, right? Because if you're listening to a spouse that you love and they love you, they could still be giving you information that would take you off your path moving forward because it's their subconscious state trying to gain control. It's their subconscious state fearful of loss. It's not because they don't love you. It's because they're... They feel like they're losing the law. So therefore, what? They don't want to support you in your decision making. You follow me? They don't want to support that process of growth. And that is where the challenge becomes with spouses. So I always say, look, some of the people that give you the worst information are the ones that love you the most. And it's not because they're trying to, to, to not love you. It's because their subconscious feels a fear of loss by you going out and chasing your dreams. So they're speaking from a what? A complacency fear state. So you have to have those discussions, but you also have to be in a state of mind to be on the same page in your spouse, your dating life. Like for instance, I know I learned a lot coming out of my marriage for 20 something years. I learned what I don't want. And I learned what I want. I, I learned that I want somebody that can keep up with me. I learned that I want somebody that's self-sufficient and self-starter. I learned that I want somebody that's a motivator and that can motivate themselves and not speak on negative or bad about others or be complaining. I learned all of that. I learned I want to be with somebody that can hold a conversation and smile. I learned that I want to be with somebody that knows how to get up and get ready for the day and, and wants to look presentable and, and, and take pride in how they look. I've learned all these things over the years, right? These are the things that I've learned that I'm willing, that I'm not willing to sacrifice. But I've also know that other people have those same things in their life. And one of the things that I'm not willing to sacrifice is my drive for me wanting to grow and touch and help more people in life. I'm not ever going to sacrifice that again, because at my core, I think that's who I am. I think all my success in my life has led me to the point to share a message like this. It has led me to not only share my success in real estate and my success in business, but my success in my faith and my spiritual life and why I'm here and what it's all about. I think that's what I'm supposed to be. So when someone steps into my life, and starts to control that aspect or pull me back or can't live up to my expectations, then I've got problems in my life, right? And look, some people will say, well, Zach, you can't expect somebody to live up to your expectations. Well, I disagree with that. I absolutely disagree with that because if I lower my expectations, then I lower the quality of my life to allow myself just to be complacent, to be with somebody because they like me. No, that's not life. That's not life. You listen, if you love someone or you're falling in love with someone, whether it be spouse, family or whomever, they you need to be able to expect them to play at a higher level because that's where you're going to play in your life so that you're both playing at a higher level. And if they can't keep up, they're not meant to be in your journey. It's point blank, guys. It's point blank. Uh, and, and listen, I may, I, and I don't mean to come off hard, but I'm very I'm very passionate about this side. And people say, "Well, Zach, are you in a relationship? Well, I haven't been in a relationship for five years. I mean, yes, I have someone that I talk to and, and you know, things are moving along, you know, I mean, we'll see how things go. <laughs> but I mean, I'm a slow roller. Okay. <laughs> like I don't rush into relationships. I don't rush into anything. I take my time. I analyze situations. I see if things are the way they need to be. I'm a very analytical person when it comes to who I'm going to bring into my life because I need them playing at a very high level. And if they're not now, it's okay. I need to know that they can. I need to know that they want to. I need to know that they want that in their life. And, and if that's where it goes, then hey. Yeah, so what know. you're saying is you cannot fake it to make it with you. No. 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 <laughs> you can fake it to make it in a lot of life, but I'm very quick to catch on to fakeness, man. So... Anyways, I don't know how I got off on that tangent. No, but that was that was actually pretty good. Um, Solid L, she said, me and Angel are all ears. Laugh out loud, and she put the little ears. Oh, good. Yeah, you guys, I hope you're on board, but you guys are working together. I mean, you guys are a team already, Solid L and Angel. Uh, Steve says, amen. He also said, share, share, and we can relate better. I did just share, Steve. I just, look, I went a little deeper right there, right? Well, you, when you don't have anything to hide, you don't have to worry about digging deep. But I'm a very transparent person. Anybody that knows me knows I'm, um, 
I'm pretty transparent. So that's why everybody knows that they feel like they've known you their whole life. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So, hey, Diane. what else you guys got for me, man? What else? I, that was a good one. Okay, so Solidel, she says we need to be legacy builders. I agree. I love that legacy builders. Let me write that on the wall. Good job. Spell legacy for me. L e g a c y. <laughs> Carly said, this is a very common challenge for people out there trying to grow. I'm glad you're talking about this. The spousal? <laughs> the, the, I mean, the spousal challenge? <laughs> that is a huge challenge. Oh, I know. Listen, listen. I can't tell you how many people I've met in my life that have wanted to do something, knew it was the right thing to do, like knew it was the right thing to do. And they're on the phone with you and they're like, yeah, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to do. And then they go to their spouse and the spouse house just kills them, man. Oh, no, you can't do that. Or, oh, I don't want you to do that. No, what about this? What about that? They're the what ifers. Well, what if a frog had wings and wouldn't bump its butt every time it jumped neither, you know? So <laughs> stop what ifing it, guys. Look, you need, here's what I say to you. If this is what you want and you have the ability to make that decision to financially put your family in a better place and your spouse wants to cut that down, then do what I say. Show them. Show them. Say, I'm going to do it anyways, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how I can make this work. I'll never forget the first time I ever bought a, a, a coach, a mentor, a consultant is really what he was, into my business world. He sat down with me, and he said, yeah, and now this guy was a rock star. He was running a Silicon Valley company. He was a CEO making a quarter of a million dollars a year, plus he was wholesaling 10 deals a month. Man, this guy was a machine. Yeah. And I was like, man, I got to learn from this guy. And I remember the first time I ever went up to him. Now, this goes back to who are you listening to, right? I wanted to listen to this guy. This guy knew how to grow businesses. He knew how to systemize and process. And he knew, man, he just knew. And I wanted to learn from him. I went up to him, tried to get him to work with me. He wouldn't work with me. He said, oh, you're one of those wholesalers. He said, you're new, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I'm new. He said, call me in six months. I said, why six months? He said, because most wholesalers never make it past six months. That pissed me off, man. Like, that just pissed me off. And I looked at him, and I thought, man, I'm going to show you. I went home, put on my calendar. Six months later, guess what? I called him. I said, hey, Joe. His name was Joe. <laughs> <laughs> his, his name really was Joe. I said, hey, Joe, this is Zach. You remember me? He's like, who? I said, I'm the guy that met you at the RIA. I said, you told me to call you in six months if I'm still in business. And he started laughing. He said, well, man, I like your attitude already. I said, well, I want to work with you. How do we do that? He said, well, tell me where you're at. I'll come meet you. I said, okay. Um, two days later, we scheduled it up. He came by my office and met with me. And... Um, he came in and he started talking to me about business and growth and systems and the power of consultants in his life and why I need one in my life because I'll never get over the hurdle. And I was listening. Like, I was all ears. I mean, this guy was living the life I wanted to live. I mean, maybe not like lifestyle, but life as in how he was able to build businesses and create systems. And I wanted to learn that. And um, I was all ears. And, and I said, well, this sounds great, Joe. I was like, so what are you going to teach me if we work together? He said, well, I'm not going to teach you anything about real estate. I said, what? <laughs> I said, well, I'm in real estate. He said, you don't need to know anything about real estate to be successful at real estate. And I said, what? Like, what are you talking about? He said, man, if you never learn how to run this business, he said, I don't care if it's real estate, cars, whatever, you're going to fail. And it like hit home in that moment. Like I was like, this guy's right. It has nothing to do with me learning everything I want to learn about real estate. It's got everything to do with me learning how to run a freaking business to where it's successful, to systemize it, to process it, to get things in place so that I can step back and let that business run itself. And I said, okay, Joe, well, I'm in, man. I'm in. <laughs> I said, teach me about business. And he looked over at me and he said, okay, it's going to be $30,000. <laughs> I said, well, how long is that for? He said, two days. That's right. He said, two days, if you didn't hear me correctly. And I just remember, I fell back in my seat and I said, now let me get this right. You want me to pay you $30,000 for two days? He said, yeah. He said, that's what I charge. I said, well, what am I going to learn in two days? He said, everything you need to run any business you ever want. 
And I said, well, man, Joe, I need to think about this. And he said, well, I got other people I'm going to after you. If you don't want it, that's fine. And I said, well, well, no, wait a minute. Let's talk about it. And he's like, well, I need a check. I need, I need to take payment today. I said, well, I probably need to talk to my wife. And he said, oh, well, if she wears the pants, let me talk to her. <laughs> I said, well, dang, like this guy was for real, right? And I was like, oh, well, man, you know, you know I don't know how she's going to feel about all this. And he looked me dead in the eyes and he said, what is your responsibility to your family? And I said, it's to take care of them. And he said, so, do you think the decision today would take care of them? I said, I think it would not only take care of them, but my family down the road. He said, then you already know the decision. He said, but if you're going to play me and act like you got to go get approval from someone else to make a financial decision that's going to benefit your whole family, he said, then I don't want to work with you. And it was like the biggest slap in my face that made me realize that he was basically stating to me that if I knew this was right, and I knew this is what I wanted to do, then this was what I needed to do for the sake of my family. And I wrote him the check. And I'll tell you this, that first year with him, I did just short of $1 million, 900 and something thousand dollars. I was pissed off because I didn't break the 1 million mark. But it was all because he taught me everything that had nothing to do with real estate. He taught me everything about business and systems and processes and organization and scaling and all the stuff that I never knew anything about. And most people starting a real estate business knows nothing about it neither, right? And that's what he taught me in two days. Now, fast forward six months into that, I was doing extremely well. He called me back up and says, hey, I want to work with you now. I was like, well, well, what do you want to do? He said, I'm going to send you all my leads. He said, you call them, you negotiate them, you contract them. We'll sell them together and I'll give you half of everything. I was like, done. I was getting over 100 leads a week from this guy. So the point of that story is, is sometimes in life, the hardest decision we have to make is a decision we have to make on our own. Because we have to understand that we are talking to ourselves and we are able to listen to ourselves when we know the decision that we're making is the right decision. Sometimes we have a tendency to listen to ourselves when it's all the negative nonsense. Don't do it. It's scary. You might fail. That's all the negative bull S, right? <laughs> The decision-making process, it's there, guys. When you think long and hard about what decisions you're making in your life and where is it going to take you, it's there. It's already in you. It's, it's ready to come out and make those decisions. So you got to think about that. What else we got going on? Solid L, she says, share more deeper. Love this topic today. Yeah, this I'm just kind of talking today. Like, you guys are leading this conversation. I just started off with who you're listening to. <laughs> But that brings me back. You remember three years ago when I first started working for you? Mm -hmm. I would, I wouldn't even told not to do real estate. I was just told not to work for me. You you make bad life decisions. Yeah, you, you were to told not to work job. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine that? I mean, I think I'm a pretty good guy to work for. I mean, I would agree. <laughs> so. And I just thought it was, you know, I oh really yeah, that I, that's a control thing. Well, he was. A, that's a control thing. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. A lot of times in life, people are just controlling. Like that's, that's their weakness. Their weakness is control. They want to control everything. They want to control you. They want to control me. They want to control everything around them. And what the problem with that is, is that's impossible. You understand that's impossible. You can't control everything. You absolutely can't. So what happens to those people is when they're trying to control everything and they can't, they live in a constant state of chaos. Because they can't control, so their brain is freaking out on them, man. That's why I learned a long time ago, man, just let it go. Shit, I don't want to control everything. <laughs> like, I just want to be like, whatever, you know, that sounds good to me. It's so funny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to control you. My controller over here. Uh, yeah. My handler. My handler over here. He still gets away from me sometimes, though, damn it. <laughs> it's just chasing me around the office today. Oh, that's I'm like, shit, I got stuff to do, Jill. <laughs> And that one day when you were hiding? Yeah, I do hide from her sometimes. I got some good hiding spots, though. You do. They scare me. So Steve says, like you say, your spouse can make or break you. Woo, boy, can they break you sometimes. But yes, uh, look, a good supportive spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend, man, it can change everything, guys. It can change 
everything. The other thing I want you to listen to me right now on is if you're sitting there and you're watching this or you're watching this later or whenever, and you're thinking, well, man, my spouse just is never going to support me. Let it go. Let it go. Don't think that you can't move forward if your spouse doesn't support you. Don't live that way, okay? Because that will hold you back. It will restrict you from your own personal growth. If you've got a downplaying spouse or a naysayer girlfriend or boyfriend that doesn't want you to do something, but you know this is the right thing for you to do, then you do it. You do it, my friend. And I mean you do it big time because the biggest gift in life is per, is turning around and chasing what other people tell you not to do because they say you won't do it or you won't make it and proving them all wrong. Lesson. That's the best thing in the world. Proving them wrong. Saying, look, <laughs> told you so. <laughs> told you so. Don't be in the Legos movie. Don't be in the, the Legos. The Legos movie, I'm sorry, but that was an awesome movie just for like this kind of. What was in the Legos movie? Did you ever see the Lego movie? I mean, Everyone I goes and 40. goes. Well, everybody goes and they go into their their cubicle and they all do the same thing and they do the same thing every day and then the box they, syndrome they get in but the one lego man he gets underground and he's with the ninja and like life is all crazy and chaotic and fun ah, but up there you know, everything's systematic yeah and they're like yeah. driving they're like hey that's the box syndrome you guys might have heard me talk about this like we get up from we get up in the morning and we get out of our box bed we go downstairs we eat our box breakfast we stare at the box tv we go get our box lunch we go get in our box car we drive to our box office we get in our box cubicle we work on our box computer we go eat our box lunch we go check out on our box time clock we go get in our box car we drive home to our box house we go get eat our box dinner we go sit in front of the box tv and then we go to our box bed and we start it all over again that's the box syndrome so be a circle in a world full of boxes be a, no be a i don't know be a star be a, a hectagon be, be a <laughs> trapezoid be something different man <laughs> hey if you're feeling me today say yes just type it in i, I you guys aren't communicating with me very much Jonathan, so. he said standard issue life Yes, Jonathan, that is a standard issue life, but we don't want to be standard, do we? We don't want to be standard. We want to be a hexagon in a square world. <laughs> you pick your shape. You don't have to be the same shape as everybody, but pick something That's different. it, man. Pick a shape. I like that. Be a tra trapezoid, you know? <laughs> be an octagon. <laughs> like, be something other than a box. <laughs> so, you don't want to be a square. I remember when I was a kid, if you got called a square, it was bad. Yeah. You too? Yeah. Yeah, like if somebody yeah. was like, you square, like it was a negative thing, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not no damn square. I'm when, a trapezoid. And when Rob and I first started dating, I used to call him a square all the time. Rob a square? Mm -hmm. I could see that. He's come out of his shell a lot. He is. Though. He's turning into a circle. Yeah, he's turning into a circle? <laughs> Before you know it, he'll be a hexagon. Right. He might even get to octagon. <laughs> he might get to an octagon. Well, I think a hexagon's more than an octagon, right? What's a hex? Hex octagon is, is eight. eight. Octagon is eight. Yeah. Hexagon is what? I'm not oh, sure. I don't know. I, I do geography, Zach. You're getting me in the math yeah. now. <laughs> no, that's that's geometry. That is I'm geometry. in the math. I can do algebra six. and Justin said six. What six? What six, Justin? The hexagon <laughs> or the octagon? <laughs> the hexagon is six. Yes, Diane, there you go. I'm gonna prove my spouse oh. that I can do this. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that makes me happy. That a girl. Solid L said yes. Uh, Talon said yes, Zach. You are right on the money. Jonathan was helping us with six is the hexagon. Um, Steve. Five. Said, Solid L says five is a hexagon. We got a debate going on right now. So is it six or five? Which one is it? Five or six, whatever. Oh, whatever. <laughs> five or six. That sounds like me. Yeah, you know. 200,000, 500,000, oh, you know, it's somewhere Robert in there. Robert says eight. Oh, and then Jonathan says five is the pentagon. Five is, the, no, that's a star. Five is a pentagon as in, it's the triangle. Well, I don't want to draw it. I don't you know. I ain't into all that. <laughs> 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 I ain't trying to put no damn pentagon. You know what's hilarious and I love this is that we are all being so open right now that nobody cares if they're wrong or right. Everybody is throwing it out there, what they think that it is. I like, yeah, that's right. That's good. Yes, I know. Five is a pentagon, but we're not talking about a pentagon, okay? We want a hexagon or an octagon. We're talking about this right here. 
And how we got on this topic, I don't know neither, but we're talking about this. The stop sign. Yeah, it's the stop sign. What is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven sides. I think we Well, that's wrong. One, two, three, four, five, eight. six. That's eight sides. What has eight sides? What has eight sides? Anybody know that? Somebody Google it real quick. That's an octagon. That's an octagon. Okay, so what is a trapezoid? Is that a dinosaur? <laughs> <laughs> What's a what, I gotta that's it. a Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex there, Jill? <laughs> that's that's a, a trapezoid is not a dinosaur. Oh, geez. I mean it could be trapping stuff, and it could his an could yes, be called that a is an octagon. But what is a trapezoid? Okay, it's got five sides. It's so got it's five like sides, this. so it's like this. It's the triangle that's cut off. Yes. Okay, well, we don't want to be a trapezoid. That's kind of bland there, too. All right, anyways, enough <laughs> about this stuff. You guys are funny. Hey, you guys got anything else for me today? I got lots of stuff I can be doing today. I love being here with you guys. What else you got for me? A rectangle uh, with uneven sides, yes. Everybody is, like, on the octagon side. <laughs> hey, what else you got? So, listen, the message today is really what? Who are you listening to? I want you to really soak that in today. If you enjoyed that message, please type in, I enjoyed the message. And also share this thing, guys. Like, it's important that you share this message. Like, this is a good message, even though I went into my, my relationship life. <laughs> <laughs> so, Solidel, she says, uh, no boxes for me. I want to be outside the boxes. Yes, outside the box in your own boat. A rectangle with uneven sides. Cool, Steve. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed this message today, type in, I enjoyed the message. I just want to know that you got it. I'm listening I'm to the oct I'm listening to the octagon. Okay. Um, I enjoyed the message. Cool. Um, so that's what it's it. about. It's all about who you're listening to. Steve said, I enjoyed it and shared it. Good, Steve. That's, man, I, I like that. See, this is the type of stuff why I want the free stuff, right? It's when people start sharing the message. I want to be able to give them stuff for free. Diane, she said, I definitely enjoyed the message. Good, Diane. Yeah, you may not want to share this message on your wall. <laughs> Isn't she the one that said yeah. she didn't have a supportive spouse? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might not want to share this one. Let's just keep this between me and you, okay? <laughs> Robert said, I enjoyed the message. Verda said, well done, Zach. I enjoyed your message. Ariana said, it was fun today. I enjoyed the message. Good. Solidel, she said, I enjoyed the message. Awesome, awesome. I'm glad you guys got it today. So the question is, is who are you listening to? I hope that I see a bunch of you this weekend in Dallas, Texas, where you'll be listening to me for three days, teaching you how to grow your business, get up off the couch, make some money in with your life, how to get where you want to be. That's this weekend. We're going to roll up the sleeves and we're going to dig in, guys. So it's going to be a powerful weekend if you're coming out to see me. If not, well, that's the last one one we're doing this year so we'll roll one out um sometime next year and hopefully you can catch that one hey listen to this guys if you um if you if you're just on here and you, you stuck with me all the way to the end because you liked what i had to say but you don't know who i am get my book my book right here will help you understand how to get your first deal done in real estate. It's My First Deal Playbook. Uh, you can go to myfirstdealplaybook.com, uh, get a copy of that. I'll actually give you the book for free. All I ask is you pay for the shipping and handling just because I want to get the message out there. I want everyone to know they can do it, um, and I want to know that you are helping. So if you know somebody that needs the book, get the book for them too. we got people getting multiple copies of this thing. Um, they're sent, giving it to their kids. They're giving it to their brothers and sisters mothers and dads neighbors it's amazing the stories we're getting off of this book already so I'm proud of it um, it'll be on Amazon real soon we're gonna push it to bestseller I'm gonna need your help to put some positive comments on Amazon for me if you've read the book if you haven't read the book buy the book read it and give me a comment on it right so that's how it works hey anyways I've had a good day today with you guys I've enjoyed you today you guys are a fun group today I know we we kid around sometimes well actually we kid around a lot but ultimately I hope you got the message the message was who are you listening to and why are you listening to that person and sometimes it's you you're listening to that you need to stop Okay, so this is Zach Childers. I am your real real estate coach, and I'm here to help you. And this is Jill. 
Yes, before he does say goodbye for today, I just want to let everybody know Toby is not on today because Toby is joining us in Dallas. So stay tuned because we'll get some pictures with Toby for the first time. Is she time. driving over? She's flying. She's flying. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm excited to see Toby. I'm She's been to meet such her. a positive person on the she growth has. of this. Yeah. Yes. She's been with us since the beginning. And I remember when we first started this, we were getting like 10 people on it. And, um, you know, and then we might hit a hundred views, but, um, she was there in the beginning and now we're hitting thousands of views, hundreds of comments. I mean, I, I'd really like to see our shares get to hundred shares. That's how we know we're making an impact. So that would be amazing. Yeah. Anyways, guys, stay with us. We'll be back next week. Uh, we got next week, Tuesday, we're going live at one thirty Eastern time zone. We're going to be talking about rental houses versus apartments. And then we've got our dig deeper series on Wednesday. We'll be back next week to you. This is Zach Childress, your real estate coach. See you then.